Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Holy Father, at the appointed time you set us your only begotten Son. Through his death and resurrection he gave us life, and he poured out the Holy Spirit upon us, the Spirit of adoption through whom we call you our Father. With joy and holiness make us worthy to celebrate this fit Pentecost, the feast of the descent of your Holy Spirit upon the pure disciples in the upper room. And we thank you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with the church and her children. Father who has no beginning and who is the origin of all fatherhood in heaven and on earth and to his son Jesus Christ our Lord the word the wisdom and the might of the Father and to the Holy Spirit who proceeds from the Father and from the Son the source of all divine gifts, the living one who gives life to all. To the good one be glory and honor on this feast and all the days of our lives and forever. Amen. O God, the Spirit, the Paraclete, in former times you spoke through the prophets and in latter times through the apostles. You sanctify churches and you make perfect the divine services. You confer the priesthood and you complete baptism. You exalt the holy mysteries and you forgive sins. You are the Spirit who delves into the depths of the Father, the Spirit who makes us children of God, the Spirit of truth, wisdom, of understanding, of knowledge, and of fear of the Lord. Now, O Holy Spirit, we implore you with the fragrance of this incense, and we ask you to renew your divine gifts in us. Descend upon us as you once descended upon the holy apostles in the upper room. Fill us with the wisdom of your teachings. Make us temples worthy of your dignity. Quench our thirst with your grace. Enrich us with the knowledge of your mysteries. Illumine us with your light. May we live for you and worship you with purity and holiness. We raise glory to you, through you, to the Father who is hidden, and to the Son who is adored forever.
Accept our incense and in your grace fill us with strength, wisdom, and holiness. Show us the riches of your heavenly gifts that you bestow on each one of us according to our disposition. We raise glory and thanks to you, to the Father, and to his only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, 
which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues, as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded, and in amazement they asked, Are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his own native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. They were all astounded and bewildered and said to one another, what does this mean? But others said, scoffing, they have had too much new wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and proclaimed to them, you who are Jews, indeed all of you staying in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to my words. These people are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. It will come to pass in those days, God says, that I will pour out a portion of my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. Indeed, upon my servants and my handmaids, I will pour out a portion of my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. And I will work wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood, fire, and a cloud of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and splendid day of the Lord. And it shall be that everyone shall be saved who calls on the name of the Lord. Praise be to God always. Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Saint John, who proclaimed life unto the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. Remain silent, O listeners, for the Holy Gospel is about to be proclaimed. Listen and give glory and thanks to the word of the living God. 
the Lord Jesus says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father that he will give you another advocate to be with you always, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him because he remains within you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I shall come to you. In a little while, the world shall no longer see me, but you will see me, because I live and you shall live. And on that day you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I in you. This is the truth, peace be with you. And the days of Pentecost having been accomplished. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. So the entire history of salvation is about accomplishing and fulfilling the particular and expanding to a universal. Fulfilling and perfecting a particular, expanding to the universal. So the Feast of Pentecost, the Greek, it's a Greek word, it just means 50th. And it's a feast, an agricultural feast that predates even Moses. It was a day of a harvest and the offering of the barley. It was a harvest festival. 50 days following the Passover, which was another agricultural festival. So you accomplish an individual local agricultural festival. It is perfected by the coming of the law through Moses and then elevated universalized in the sense that it moves from a particular agricultural festival to a universal meaning for the people of Israel under the law, which is the accomplishment and the giving of the law on Mount Sinai. This is why all of these pilgrims are in Jerusalem at the time. That's why you have this list of all these people around the eastern Mediterranean basin. They're all there as pilgrims. It would, the city of Jerusalem would swell like at the Passover, why there were so many people there for Palm Sunday. It's exactly the same reason, a different festival, but the same reason why all these pilgrims. And you also have in the listing in, by St. Luke of proselytes. In other words, these were Gentiles who had come to believe in the gospel, to believe, excuse me, in the law of Moses and had affiliated themselves with Israel. Some of them fully became Jews. They embraced totally the law. But many of them didn't because of circumcision. And so men will understand that. So it's one thing to do for babies. It's another thing to do for grown men. And so many of the men went, well, well okay. And they would follow everything of the law. They'd do the dietary laws. They'd follow all the prescriptions. They'd be at synagogue. They would pray. They would follow. But they weren't considered officially and fully engrafted in Israel because of that limitation. That's why it speaks about proselytes from Rome. These are converts. These are individuals who associate. Centurion, the centurion Cornelius, later on also in the Acts of the Apostles. These are individuals that our Lord is in contact. They are technically, they are Gentiles. They're coming from a, ba a pagan background, not from Israel. So even the, law, even the law of Pentecost, the observance of the law of Moses is being universalized that is going to become the gospel. And so the conferring of the law, the giving of the law, the theophany of God on Mount Sinai is what's commemorated at Pentecost. And so the Lord gives the new law that is engrafted and written on the hearts of flesh, the hearts of men. This transformation that universalizes it, fulfilling the old 
and universalizing it for all the nations of the earth. And this is when you come to the full universalization in Pentecost for all the nations of the earth. You know, in the modern world, Christianity is often portrayed as being something where you're just supposed to be good boys and girls and go home and say your rosary quietly by yourself. Go away. Don't do anything certainly in public. But that is not Christianity at all. Christianity from the very beginning was a triumphant religion meant for every race on earth. This is why they speak all these languages. This is not the purpose of just showing a miracle by having them speak different languages. It is to indicate that those 120 some people who are in that upper room, who are around that house on that day, are the church. They are the destiny for all the nations of the earth in the fullest universalizing aspect. It's not so evident these days as you watch it wither up and die in the Western world, the gospel. But it is making huge inroads in Asia and in Africa. Now, Africa in the mid-19th century had very, very, very few Christians, and most of those were in the northern, in Ethiopia and Egypt. But in the last 150 years, it is the largest religion in Africa. It is continuing by leaps and bounds. When I went, I've been to, you, to be in Uganda, and to see the faith as these people live the faith, it's absolutely extraordinary, because for them it's very clear, this encompasses everything. This is my personal life, this is the spirit, soul, body of my life individually. It's the life of my family, it's the life of my community. It's the life of my nation. Over 90% of Uganda is baptized. Half of them are Catholic and half of them are, are Church of England just because of colonialization. But the absolutely extraordinary thing, a handful, about five to seven percent are, are Muslim. But it's an absolutely extraordinary thing to see a community where the faith is actually alive and vibrant and spreads and is communicated with enthusiasm, where a recognition of the church is part of what they do because they recognize the gospel. The church and the gospel cannot be separated. They are exactly the same thing. The gospel is proclaimed, people hear, they respond, they gather in community. That's what the church is. Is this response to the word of God the response to the gospel? And that's what's taking place on Pentecost. You go from the accomplishment and the perfection of something which is limited in a way, moving further in a larger universalization and accomplishing even the old law in its limitations to make it universal for all of the peoples of the earth. And the gospel continues to spread even in communist China. It's a very strange phenomenon going on, but it is something also taking place throughout Asia. And so it's an important thing that when we stop and look at Pentecost 2,000 years ago, this is not a historical event in the sense that it was finished. 2,000 years ago we commemorate today because it was the beginning of something of which we are part and of which we are meant to continue to be part by being the voice of communication of this gospel to everyone, including to broken and wounded Mainers. Perhaps we should even say especially to broken and wounded Mainers. Their ancestors one time had the faith, and therefore there should be a disposition, even when we find so much antagonism it's important to understand that the, under, the misunderstanding is the source of that antagonism. We've had numerous people come and visit over the years. They come in, they go out, and then you find that they have a sister, a brother, a cousin, who's like viscerally anti-Catholic. They don't practice any religion, they're just anti-Catholic. And then you never see these individuals again because they grab them. It is misunderstanding. The church, the people who are atheists and who violate and who attack the Catholic Church, they attack something they do not know. Because if they knew it, as you know it, you see it as being beautiful and vibrant and life-giving, not life-denying, on the complete contrary. It's part of the unfortunate aspect of politics these days where pro-life is just about babies. But pro-life is the gospel. 
the vitality of everything, of the individual, the full vibrancy and vitality of families, of the relationships of men and women, of relationships of parents to their children and children to their parents. This is the life and the vitality that is given in the spirit on Pentecost. Ruach, the spirit, the wind that comes rushing in is a transformation of hearts. This is the law that is written upon the hearts of men. This is the unification and the restoration that takes place that begins on this day in order for it to bring about actually a conquest of the world. It is destined for all the nations of the earth. And when that moment is accomplished, our Lord will appear in his full majesty before them. It's not to say that every single person at that point, but all the nations of the earth to receive the gospel. That is why they speak these languages. It's something that the Pentecostals and the Charismatics have never un understood. There's a reason why they speak in tongues. It has a full meaning of that vitality and life that is to be given universally to all. So on this day, we will have at the communion time the right of adoration. There are a few of the flyers still left, those who want to follow it. Otherwise, of course, it's all in English, so it's not difficult. And we do what is called the rite of adoration or the rite of kneeling. Because as this universalism moves and spreads across, of course, when it makes a conquest after 300 years, it makes a conquest of the very empire that controls the Mediterranean basin. In the 300s is when the church herself Reorgan she organizes herself in a public way now that she's no longer being exterminated and attacked throughout the centuries. And so she organizes herself in the fourth century through the great councils of Nicaea and Constantinople. And it's there where we have directives that were given at the time which endure to this day. You speak about dioceses, eparchies. These were the Roman imperial divisions of territories and governorships in the empire. So the church just says, well, we'll align with that and where there's a diocese, an eparchy, we'll plop a primary shepherd there and a primary shepherd there. This is your origin of diocese. This is an old imperial designation of governance. But one of the other things that was also described in the midst of these councils is that the right of kneeling Kneeling because of the question of the day of the resurrection, the Sunday that comes each day that is the most ancient observance of Christians. On that day, the church reiterated in her synod, in her councils, in that fourth century, that it was unfitting to kneel on the day of the resurrection because that is the day that the Lord God raised us up. You'll have in the prayers, by the power of God, stand up. By the power of God, arise. At the end of each of our kneeling ceremonies for the Father and of the Son and of the Spirit, each time it is you stand up now under the power of God because it is the resurrection and the redemption of truly life given to us. And so as you come to Pentecost at the end of the Paschal season, because of the canons of the council saying that not only is it unfitting for us to kneel on the Sundays, it is unfitting for us to kneel during the entire Paschal season, the entire Easter season, because it is the entire season of the resurrection, which of course is accomplished and perfected on Pentecost. And hence the week of Pentecost is the rite of kneeling that we stop at the end of the season, we reintroduce kneeling into our prayer life, not on Sundays, but we reintroduce the kneeling into our prayer lives through this rite of kneeling. But after each of the adoration, left knee, right knee, both knees, this act of adoration is now you stand and arise in the power of God. It's more than just telling you to get up. It is reminding you that you have been renewed by the Spirit of God, transformed in your hearts, and transfigured by your baptism in your chrismation, which is why holy water will also be blessed, and then we will have, sprinkle me with hyssop and I shall be purified. And the priest will go down to sprinkle everyone as a reminder of that baptism that transfigured us, brought us into life, and into that conquering reality, which is meant to bring that vitality of God and the life of God to all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
believe in one God, the Father of all things, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Chosen One, our Holy Father, Saint Mary, Saint Jude, and Saint Conan. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and brothers, and our brother, mothers and brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered for the intentions of all the members of this parish. 
Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering. James, brother of the Lord, on page 794. 794. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O God, the Father, lover of all people, though we are unworthy, make us worthy of salvation. Purified of deceit and hypocrisy, and united in the bond of love and peace, through our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, may we give one another the greeting of peace with the holy kiss. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, who is good, life-giving, and consubstantial with you, now and forever. to you, O holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let us give the greeting of peace to our neighbor with love and faith that are pleasing to God. Send your blessings upon those who bow before your holy altar. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O God, the Father, in your love for all people, you sent your Son into the world to bring the lost sheep back to you. Do not turn your holy face away from us as we celebrate this spiritual and bloodless sacrifice, relying on your mercy and through the grace of your only Son. We ask that this holy mystery instituted for our salvation not be for our condemnation. Rather, may it blot out all our sins, forgive our faults, and be an expression of our thanks for your goodness. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father and the Father. 
the grace of the only begotten Son and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit, let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship him with humility. It is right and just to glorify you, bless you, praise you, adore you, and give you thanks, O maker of all things, visible and invisible. The highest heavens and all its powers praise you, the sun, the moon, and all the stars, the earth, the seas, and all that is in them, the heavenly Jerusalem, and the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven. The angels, archangels, and the heavenly host all sing, praising your majestic glory with triumphant hymns, with never-ending voices and with sweet acclamations. They cry out and they proclaim. Until I come again. We remember your death, O Lord. We profess your resurrection. We await your second coming. We implore your mercy and compassion. We ask for the forgiveness of sins. May your mercy rest upon us. O Lord, remember your death your resurrection, your ascension into heaven, your sitting at the right hand of God the Father, and your glorious second coming, 
when you shall judge the world with justice and reward all people according to their deeds. Now we ask you, do not repay us according to our sins and transgressions, but in your compassion and love for all people, cleanse us of all our sins. We, your people and your inheritance, implore you and through you and with you, implore your Father, saying, Have mercy on us, Almighty Father, your sinful children receive your graces we thank you for them and because of them for the forgiveness of sins and eternal life for those who receive it. Amen. And make the mixture in this chalice the blood of the new covenant, a life-giving blood, a saving blood, a heavenly blood, a blood that redeems our souls and bodies of the, the blood of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and eternal life for those who receive it. Amen. May these holy mysteries be for the sanctification of the souls and bodies of those who share in them, that they may excel in all good deeds. May they be for the strengthening of your holy church, which you have founded upon the rock of faith, so that the gains of hell shale shall never prevail against her, delivering her from all heresies and doubts until the end of time and forever. Amen. We offer you, O Lord, this sacrifice for your holy church throughout the world and for the holy places that you have glorified by the presence of Christ your Son, especially for Zion, Jerusalem, mother of all the churches. Remember our pure bishops who spread the word of truth, especially our blessed fathers, Francis the Pope of Rome, Bashara Peter, our patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our bishop, and all the orders of the church and those who serve her. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord Remember, O Lord, our parents and all our brothers and sisters, those who are here praying with us, those who are not here, and those who have asked us to remember them in our prayers. Answer the petitions that will lead to their salvation. Remember those who have presented offerings upon your holy altar, those for whom they have been offered, those who have desired to make an offering, but were unable, those whom we have remembered, and those whom we have not. Reward them with the joy of your salvation, and accept their offering upon your heavenly altar. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, our civil leaders, and clothe them in your fear, that they may stand for justice and establish peace. Remember also captives and prisoners, the sick, the suffering, and the afflicted, the needy, and those who labor in all walks of life. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord 
Remember, O Lord, all those who have pleased you from the beginning, the holy and glorious ever-Virgin Mary, the patriarchs, prophets, and apostles, St. John the Forerunner, St. Stephen the Archdeacon and First Martyr, St. James the Brother of the Lord, St. Joseph, St. Jude, St. Conan, and all the saints. In your grace, count us among them in the church of the firstborn, who are enrolled in heaven. We pray to you, Lord. Remember, O oh Lord, the fathers and teachers who spread the word of truth in your holy church and preached your Son, Jesus Christ, to all nations. Through their prayers, grant peace to your church and confirm their teachings in our souls. We pray to you, O oh Lord. Remember, O God, of all spiritual and earthly beings, the faithful departed who have died in the true faith. Grant them rest and do not take their faults into account. Through our Lord, God, and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is without sin, we hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. Pardon, O oh God, and forgive us and the departed, so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. With the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. As it was, is now, and shall be forever. presented to you, and you have perfected them by the grace of your only Son and by the descent of your Holy Spirit. Sanctify us so that with pure hearts and enlightened souls we may call upon you, O Holy Father, God of heaven, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of God, now and forever. Yes, O Lord our God, Lead us not into temptation that we do not have the strength to endure. But when we are tempted, 
deliver us through Jesus Christ our Lord. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Shlomo Elukulukun. O Lord, we bow our heads before you, awaiting your abundant mercy. Send your blessings upon us and sanctify us so that we may become worthy to share in your holy mysteries through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and his mercy and love for all people. You are blessed and glorified with him and with your Holy Spirit now and forever. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit. Holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit, blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth, to him be glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that sanctified by your holy body, and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for new life. O Lord our God, to you be glory Let us kneel before the Lord upon the left knee. Let us kneel and ask the Lord for mercy. Kneel and adore the Most High God and receive the pardon of your faults from the Holy Spirit. In the likeness of tongues of fire he was sent to the upper room so that by his descent and hovering you may receive happiness and confidence. Lord God, Father of mercies, we give you thanks. On Pentecost you filled the disciples who were in Jerusalem awaiting the promise of their Lord with the Holy Spirit. Suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a of a violent wind, and tongue of fire rested upon each one of them. All those who were in Jerusalem were filled with awe and glorifying you, O giver of all that is good. You sanctified and you sent your holy apostles to bring all people to the knowledge of your divinity baptizing them in your name. O Father, and then of your only Son, and of your Holy Spirit, we worship 
thanking, glorify the Holy Trinity, one God, now and forever. Amen. By the power of God, stand up. Behold the day of salvation and consolation when the Father, through the Spirit, poured forth a gift of new languages upon the apostles, bringing the people back from error. Rejoice on this day, and with the apostles let us adore and praise the Son, so that he may pardon our faults. We thank and glorify him now, With the angels who worship him in fear, we kneel and we adore the Father of truth, for he is our maker and our Lord. Before him every knee shall bend and every tongue shall give him praise. O oh, come and let us worship the true Son, sent by the Father of light. Having had mercy upon us, he knelt on our behalf, offered prayer for our sake, and raised us up from our fall from grace. Let us worship the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete, and kneel before him. On this day we ascend from the Father, who was not seen, and he has come to us, resting upon us. He took away our sins, and he clothed us with glory and victory. In Christ our God, may we offer you true and perfect adoration, in purity and in holiness, at this time when the holy and glorious gifts of the Paraclete are given to us. We raise glory and thanks to you, to your blessed Father, who sent you for our salvation, and to your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. By the power of God, stand up. This is the day when heaven rejoiced and earth glad, the cherubim sang, and the seraphim cried out, and the apostles exulted for having received the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. On this day, the divine unction taken away from Adam our father, because of his disobedience, was restored to us. With it, the disciples were anointed, people were forgiven, and all nations were granted salvation. O Lord, our God, to you be glory now and forever. Amen. Let us kneel before the Lord on both knees. Let us kneel and ask the Lord for mercy. Bow your heads and worship God, the Holy Spirit, who spoke through the prophets, made himself understood through interpreters and visionaries, revealed hidden things, and announced things to come. He descended upon the apostles in the likeness of tongues of fire. O Holy Spirit, the Paraclete, may we become pure temples of your glory to serve you. For you perfect and sanctify our souls with your grace. We worship you, O Holy Spirit, and the Father, and the Son, from whom you proceed. Now and forever. Lift up your hands and bless yourselves with the cross of light. 
place in your souls the assistance and salvation that come from the Holy Spirit, whom you have worshipped in faith with the Father and the Son, now and forever.
Again and again we thank you, O Lord, and we raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. O lover of all people, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us, O Lord, O compassionate and merciful one. O lover of all people, have mercy on us. We thank you, O God the Father, for your great and indescribable love for all people. Since you have made us worthy to share in your heavenly banquet and in your Holy Spirit, 
do not forsake us for having received your holy mysteries, but keep us in the radiance of holiness and righteousness. With the saints, may we obtain a share in the heavenly reward through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, who is good, life-giving, and consubstantial with you now and forever. Shlomo el kulakulna. Jesus, our Lord, bless us, protect us, and guide us on the path of life. Favorably remember the departed of those who have shared in this Eucharist that was offered upon this divine altar. Grant protection to the living and bless them with hope through the prayers of the Virgin Mary and all the saints now and forever. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever. Amen. Amen.